Well, again, happy Easter. Thank you all so much for coming out to the nine o'clock service. So before I start, let me, uh, I'm not going to tell a joke like Pastor Tim, um, but I do have a story and most of my, most of my real life stories are funnier than jokes that I can share. So, uh, well, first of all, first things first. So last Sunday, I'm a walker when I talk. And so what they've really, they've, they've kind of caged me in. And so there's pieces of tape on either side and right here. And they said, okay, Gary, this is your safe spot. And so this is all I can do. So I can move, what, two feet to the left and two feet to the right. So uh, bear with me. If I start walking off, just somebody cough and I can come back. So I've been on staff one month today, right? So congratulations. Absolutely. But so we're sitting in our meetings, you know, and they're already, they're already, you know, already into the the, the Easter planning. And so I'm just sitting back at our staff meetings on Monday. I'm like, okay, you know, we're going to stream. Tim's going to do the seven o'clock at Magnolia. Then Joe's going to do the nine o'clock. They're going to stream it here. Then he's going to do the 1045. You know, I thought he was going to, Joe, Joe, and Joe did say, you know, hey, you're going to have to preach. I figured he'd throw me some softball pitches, do some Wednesday nights, you know, maybe a fifth Sunday. So as we got closer, it's like, hey, streaming doesn't look like it's going to work. So I'm sitting back. Back on Monday, I'm like, man, how's Joe going to do that? How's he going to, are they going to switch times? Because I'm thinking, you know, hey, it's, it, you know, no pressure. I, I'm the new guy. I can use new for like a year. And so uh, he comes to me last uh, two, is it two Mondays ago or last Monday? He says, hey, here's a sermon. I'm like, okay, is this for me just to know what you're talking about? What's going on here? He's like, no, you're preaching. I was like, really? What? So no pressure. None at all. First sermon, first service preaching is Easter. So it, it's all downhill for here. So, so praise God. So let's stand in honor of the Lord and pray, as we read God's word. We're going to go to Acts chapter 2, uh, verses 23 and 24. Oh, and it looks like y'all did that. Thank you so much. Uh, and so this... Uh, How about you do it? I'm going to stay free of it. All right. This man delivered up by the predetermined plan and foreknowledge of God. You nailed to a cross by the hands of godless men and put him to death. And God raised him up again, putting an end to the agony of death, since it was impossible for him to be held in its power. Amen. Y'all may be seated. So everything we are and everything that we believe in and our eternity rests on the resurrection. If not, if there was no resurrection, then all it was, was a man nailed to a cross. And that's it. That's the end of the story. But because of the the, the power of God and everything that we are, it was predetermined. Acts 24 talks about it. And God raised him up. We are alive again in Christ, if you've accepted him as your Lord and Savior. But it's everything we are. It's our faith. Because if the resurrection isn't true, then we're following a liar. Amen. But the resurrection is true. And over the last 20 centuries, men have tried to denounce and disprove the resurrection of Christ. Simon Greenleaf, he, he was a British, I mean, he was a lawyer, a law professor in, in Harvard. And his th- theories on law of evidence is still being used today in our courts. And he said, I'm getting some back, we appreciate your feedback. I'm getting a little bit back here. His, he set out to disprove the resurrection, Right. And so he applied the law of evidence and said, you know what, that's not true. This didn't happen. But as he continued to dig deep, dig deep, dig deep, he found out that not only was it true, but any honest person that looked at the evidence, there's no other thing but to believe that Jesus died and was raised again. It's by the resurrection that that Christ is declared the son of God. His atoning sacrifice was found pleasing to God. 
And the cross and the resurrection of Christ was no accident. Again, God predetermined these things. Frank Morrison, a British lawyer, he again set out to, to, to disprove that Christ was resurrected. He wanted to write a book to show that Christians followed a liar. So as he started gathering up facts, gathering up evidence, and looking at all the evidence, he ended up writing a book, all right. The book was called Who Moved That Stone? His first chapter titled The Book That Refused to Be Written. Because again, you can't deny the fact that Jesus died and rose again. So I don't know, raise your hand if you went to Israel or you had been to Israel, right? So think back, because this really got me thinking. We had the opportunity to go to where Jesus was put on a cross, right? We got to see that. And that in itself is moving. But then we got to go to the tomb. Not only see it, but walk inside. And it's maybe if I think Sophia had to bend down, so it's less than five foot, right? <laughs> so we had to, you know, bend, over, bend down a little bit to get in, and it's empty. Amen? How do, you, how do you not believe that? How do you not believe that Jesus died for you and rose again? Amen? Lou Wallace, just another person, just another man trying to, again, disprove the resurrection of Christ. He ended up writing Ben-Hur. All these men were either agnostics or, 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 or wanted to show that the resurrection is not true. These are all myths. That's, what, that's all it is. Wrote Ben-Hur, right? Of course, Lee Strobel, we all know about Lee Strobel. Uh, ish, uh, an incident happened with his daughter. His wife started asking questions, came to know the Lord. His life changed, right? His life changed because now his wife was a believer. He is not, and he's mad. And he's thinking, okay, what, what's this thing that's going on with her? So he wanted to prove her wrong. Research. Hey, you, you start digging, you're going to find the truth, Amen. Josh McDowell is another, another one. It goes on and on and on. And all these men have all tried to show that Jesus didn't rise again, but he did. And it's because of that we have eternal life if you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. So you can see that... Easter, friends, is not a time of, of celebrating. I was, I was, we were watching the, or we were listening to the radio. And it was, it was a Christian radio station, but I was kind of, I was uneasy on the message that they were trying to share. Because the, the, lady, the DJ on, on, the, on the radio station says, you know, Easter, if you think about it, the bunnies and the eggs represent a new life. And I looked at Sophia, I was like, what, what, what is she talking about? Bunnies? Eggs? No, that's not a new life. Christ is the new life in us. When Christ is in us, we're a new life. Amen? So it's not, and it's, Miss Cheryl's shirt is basically my sermon. It's not about the bunny, it's about the lamb. Amen? God in his power brought life in the dead body of Christ. It's also that same power that, give, that breathes, life in us, breathes, breathes eternal life in us through the Holy Spirit. And we can all experience that. We should be experiencing Easter every day when we die to ourselves and we, we raise up in Christ. Amen. Paul put it this way in Romans 6, 3 through 4. Or do you not know that all of us who have been baptized in Christ Jesus have been baptized into his death? Therefore... We have been buried with him through baptism into death in order that as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness in life. Now, I, I, I wanted to get a little bit more about, learn more a little bit more about this, this verse here. So I, I did some, some research on it. And there's actually uh, a commentary 
on this chat, this verse right here. And what really got me is this. So, you know, Paul writes, or do you not know? Right. That's a good question. But it's a question that doesn't need an answer. It's a rhetorical question. And actually what I read was he's questioning their intelligence and blessing. We could never ascribe too much to Jesus, but it, but he is worthy also to believe, to be believed in preference to Satan, unbelief, the world, the appearances to be trusted with all for all before all to be loved more than any other in opposition to any that would rival him to be followed wherever he may lead us through evil report, good report to be preferred to ease, pleasure, wealth, health to anything and everything. Jesus is worthy to be our example, our confidant, our king and and our all. He is worthy of all he requires, all we can give, all his people have done for him and suffered in his cause. Jesus is our everything. Amen. Amen. It's not something. It's not two hours on Sunday, one hour on Wednesday, the occasional Bible study. Jesus is our everything because he gave everything. It's important that when we experience Easter or to experience Easter, there are certain things that have to happen. There are certain things happen when we experience Easter. And it comes down to this. We must submit to his person. He is our Lord and Savior. For those of us that have asked God to forgive us of our sins and have asked asked him to come into our hearts. Now, Brother Joe, you know, he he, when when I was going through the process of coming on board, he asked me, he said, Gary, do you remember that time you were saved? I said, yes, sir, I do. It was 14 years ago at at a men's retreat that I gave my life to the Lord. Do you remember? It might not be a date, but do you remember when you gave your life to the Lord? What was that feeling like, right? There were no fireworks. The the flowers didn't smell better. The skies weren't bluer. But guess what? You you, you entered into the the kingdom uh, and, and, and know that you have eternal life in Christ, right? So have you done that? Because in order to experience Easter, that's the first thing, right? Because Easter is not about the barbecues. It's about our relationship with Christ. And a lot of times, you know, you'll hear sermons. And, you know, we, we have a, a saying in, our ho- in my house. And it's, it's, it's real simple, right? Something my dad told me, I tell my boys, Right? Don't talk about it, be about it, right? So are, are we just talking about it or are we being about it? Where are you at right now? Because I tell you what, 14 years ago, I only went to the men's retreat to get Sophia off my back. That's where I was, you know? I was playing church. I was just going so that my week would be better because check that box. Went to church. Sophia is happy. I'm good. Because some news, you know, some, some things we hear, it's, you, it impacts you or it doesn't impact you. It affects you or it doesn't affect you. This is the news that affects everybody. Just because you don't believe it doesn't mean it's not going to happen. Jesus is coming. Or, better yet, you're, we're all going to die. And I'd rather have Jesus on my side than nobody. Amen. The second thing is we have to surrender to his word. And that's important because it's the playbook. It's everything that we are. It's, 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 the, rule, it's the instructions on how to live our life. Everything we need to know is right here. Minus all the papers, but it's all right here. But I tell you what, it's a struggle, right? Amen. It's a struggle. It's a struggle to get in the word. 
I mean, I'm just being honest. I mean, I, I, you know, I know no other way but to be honest. It is a struggle. And it, 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 but we have to have that sacred time. You know, when I was in education, I used to tell teachers, you have to have sacred time in order to perf- perfect your craft. As Christians, we need our sacred time to perfect our craft and our walk with Christ. Right. We do. Are we putting that time in or is just the hour and a half brother Joe telling us how we should live our life? Is that sufficient for us? No, absolutely not. Because guess what? You're going to walk out that door and the enemy's waiting. Because somebody cuts you off when you're trying to leave the church parking lot. Or the light's too long at Rhodes Road in 2920. Or there's a way to me Rancho because the Methodists got there first. Right? So we have to stay hedged up and we have to surrender to his word. Amen. We have to repent, believe, and follow. Jesus does not want fans. Because fans are fleeting. Unless you're a Cowboys fan, because then we live and die with, so, amen. But fans are fleeting. Players move, teams move. But Christ is constant, always there. So are you a fan? Because, like I said, I only went to church because Sophia was there. I was, I was a fan for the two hours. Or are you a follower? And are willing to do anything for Christ. Amen. Because he said in his word, if any man come after me, let him deny himself, take up the cross and follow me. Now, that's multifaceted right there. There's three parts to that. Deny himself, take up the cross, follow me. Well, God. I'll take up the cross and I'll follow you. But I still like to do this over here. So, you know, 75% of the time I'm okay, right? We start negotiating. Are we doing what God's telling us to do? Are we denying ourselves? Absolutely not. Because we're holding on to that sin. We're holding on to that thing that keeps us in line with Christ. It's kind of like, and and Tim mentioned, Pastor Tim, this is something I'll never forget. Pastor Tim held up a flashlight one time. He said, only way to be under God is to be right under that flash, that light. If you go a little bit to the right, a little bit to the left, forward or backwards, we're not right under the light of Christ. So where are you at? Are you right under that light? Are you a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right? Because I tell you what, sometimes you want to step over here a little bit, right? Sometimes you want to step back a little bit, but then are you denying yourself and taking up the cross and following Christ? Don't talk so much yourself, but I'm going to get some water real quick because it's hot up here. So we have to, again, submit to his person, surrender to the word. So here's here's the thing, you know, again, the Bible is a playbook. It's the instructions. It's the directions of our life. So Florida TV crew was driving around right after Hurricane Andrew and driving around the neighborhood. All the houses were down and and all the houses were destroyed. Drove around the last uh, back part of the neighborhood and there was a house up and the man was outside cleaning up his yard. So the news crew stopped and went up to interview the man. So they asked him, how is your house still standing? He says, well, I built this house myself and I built it to Florida building code. And so when the building code said use by use two by sixes, I used two by sixes. Because the code, the code said, if it's built to code, it'll withstand a hurricane. I did. It did. God said also to build our house upon what? Rock. Because if we built it upon our rock, it'll stand and it'll hold true. Amen. The third thing is we have to share his love. Now, for those of you who have been to Belize or to any other mission, missionary mission trip, it's a great time in the Lord. Amen. 
But you don't have to spend money to go to the mission field because guess what? The mission field is your house. The mission field is your neighborhood. The mission field is the community. The mission field is where you work. The mission field, dot, dot, dot. Amen? It's wherever God sends you. That's the mission field. And are you being Christ-like? Because, you know, there isn't work Gary, church Gary. It's just Gary. Or are you? Work, church, and then never, and never the two shall meet. Where are you? Because we do have to share his love. It's important that we do it because he's called us to do that. In Matthew 28, he says, Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. When was the last time you truly shared Christ with somebody and had a true conversation about Christ and their eternal, eternal salvation? I tell you what, when I got saved, I called Sophia. I was like, hey, you know, got saved. I don't know what to do next, but I needed to call you. And then I started, started spreading. Then I started talking to people at work. Then I started talking to people in my neighborhood. Then I started talking to people at the store. Sophia and, 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 her, and my mother-in-law were going to go to a, a retreat or something. So I wanted to go to the store and buy, buy them a devotional. I think it was Beth Moore or, or somebody. And so I got the little, uh, I got two of the um, devotionals so they could take it with them. So I was at Walmart checking out and the cashier lady looked at it. She kind of examined it, read it a little, you know, read the back. And and so I said, hey, you know, have you read that before? Is it a good one? She was like, I don't know anything about it. I said, you don't. I said, well, I see that you're interested in it. She was like, yeah, it's I'm just reading the back. I I had I've worked here for years, but I never gone back there and looked at this book. So, well, you know what? The book is yours. Jesus loves you. And she said, that's never happened before. I said, it's never happened to me either to have somebody to want to give somebody a book. So praise God. Amen. Because it, it, Jesus moved me. I'm, I'm, ta- I'm doing what he's called me to be. That's the kind of love that we need to share. It's the love of Christ. Right. Because, again, we're all going to die. And one of the things that burdened me was making sure that everybody that I loved would go to heaven because hell's real and the weeping and gnashing of teeth is real. It's going to happen. At some point, we're, we're, no, we're going to leave this temporal body and a decision is going to be made. Finally, we have to support his church. Now, how many people went straight to tithe, right? That's true. We have to tithe. I appreciate it. My wife appreciates it. Um, But it's more than that. God has given us all gifts. Some have the gift of singing, which I don't. Some have the gift of playing instruments, of building things, of, of speaking, of leading, of whatever. Those gifts are not for you to, 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 be, to gain things here on earth. Those gifts are for you to support the church. So are you using the gifts that God has given you? you Got to check my tape. To, to further the kingdom and to support the church. Think about it. Are you truly doing what God has gifted you to do? Because if you're not, you're probably struggling where you are. Because a round hole doesn't go in a square. You get it. (laughs) Amen. Because God doesn't want you there. You might be making this much money. That's great. But that's not where God wants you. Right? Amen. Amen. But also supporting his church is coming to church. Now, again, I was the one playing church. I felt it was great getting my ears tickled by the TV minister, preacher. And and I'd use it. 
Well, this guy here says, Sophia, I don't need to. He, as long as I hear him for 30 minutes, I'm good for the week. As long as I hold my Bible up and say, this is my Bible, da, 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 da. I'm good. That's not the case. It's fellowship. Because we're all going through a struggle. This is what I tell, this is what I used to tell teachers all the time that were struggling. Nobody's the Lone Ranger. Even he had Tonto. Where's your Tonto? We need fellowship. We're called to fellowship and be of a part of an assembly. We have to be faithful. It's people working with people. I am so blessed to be in this church because there's not one person I can't call on my cell phone that wouldn't pick up at any time of the day. Amen. Brother, I'm struggling with this. Brother, I need help with this. And that has happened. I'm going to bite my lips so I don't cry. But when my mom passed away, it was my church family that gave us money to stay in a hotel so we didn't have to worry about it. It was my church family that came down and served so we didn't have to pay for that. It was my church family that prayed with me. It was my church family that was there. That's the type of, fe that's the type of fellowship we have. They dropped everything and they went. It wasn't, let me know what I could do to help you. It was, I'm here, use me. Amen. And there's plain excuses. I've used them. I'm just not at a place right now where I can go to church. I have to take care of some things, right? We all have things. Well, I'm not going to take care of them out there. They're just going to get worse. This is where you take care of your things. Amen. You lay it right here at this altar and you take care of your things. It's wet outside. It's cold outside. It's too pretty. I should be playing golf. I went last week. I've used them. They don't work because guess what? Conviction is real. And it'll keep on. It'll keep on. It'll keep on until you get right. And even when you get right, you still got to get right. It's imperative that we get these things in order because, again, Jesus is coming at a time we know not. It could be right now. It could be whatever. But he's coming back. Amen. Amen. And he's, when, he's come, when he comes back, where are you going to be? Where are you going to be in your walk? If you got to walk. Amen. That's the only way to truly experience Easter. Otherwise, again, you're doing Easter egg hunts, you're doing barbecues just to have fun and, and for nothing. It's all temporal. But the resurrection is true. And eternal life is, is yours if you choose to accept it. Amen. Amen. The resurrection showed us a doorway. It showed us the doorway in which we could step through and experience the true redeeming powers of the resurrection. And it showed us what could happen. It, it shows us that Christ has risen. Amen. And he is there. And he loves us. And God loved us so much that he sent his son to die for us. I remember looking at and, and being in the Garden of Gethsemane and just thinking. And I was taken back because... 2,000 years ago, and every step that I took, I kept on thinking, 2,000 years ago, Jesus was here. And you think about when he's in the garden, and he's thinking about, and he's praying, and he's pleading, and he's crying, and he knows what he's gonna, what's going to happen to him. He knows what he has to go through, but he didn't do that for him. He did that for you. He did that for you. He did that for you. And he most of, he did it for me. Amen. Amen. He did it for all of us. How special are we that God sent his son to 
to go through all of that. Because Easter is not about flowers. It's a horror story. Think how it starts that Friday when he's beaten, whipped, has to carry the cross, gets nailed, ridiculed for you. Amen. But the glory is great. Three days later, guess what? The tomb is empty because Christ is risen. Amen. Amen. So to close it up, friends, there's, there's two types of people, right? There's followers and there's the lost. The lost are looking if they choose. But there's two types of followers. Those that are truly following Christ are those that, are, that initially follow Christ but have fallen off. So I would ask that you truly, truly look at where you are in your life. Are you a Christ follower? Are you lost? Are you not where you need to be in Christ? We have a God to serve. We have a gospel to share. And we are the hands and feet of Christ. So when you pray, you ask God to use you. Not to use you for the things you like to do, but in anything. And that's a bold prayer, right? Because if you ask for God to use you in anything and everything, no asterisk, right? Use me except on this day. Use me except for this. Or please don't have me minister or talk to this person. Then it's conditional. If you truly want a relationship with Christ, it's everything. It's anything. It's everywhere. It's all things. Amen. Amen. Friends, Easter is is great because it's a reminder of all the things that are promised. It's all the things that are promised to us if we truly die to ourselves and accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior and walk with him. And in order to truly experience Easter, we have to submit to to the Lord, be in the word, share his love and support his church. If you never come to a place in your life of brokenness, Or never come to a place in life to say, God, I can't do this. What are you waiting for? As the band comes up, there's going to be men down here lined up. Maybe God has spoken to you today. Maybe God is telling you, make moves or make excuses. What are you going to do? Nail it down today. You should know without a doubt whether you're not you're going to heaven. Because again, we're all dying. But where are you going to spend eternity? Favorite, favorite, favorite parable. Do you want to be the servant that hears? Welcome to the arms of your master. Or do you want to be the servant? Go away from me, you worker of iniquity. There's only two choices. If you do know Christ, and maybe you're not where you need to be, I invite you to come to the altar or pray with one of these men. I'll be down here as well. I ask that you ask God to search your heart and find out what you need to do. Ask him to search your heart for the things that you continue to hold on to to keep you separated from Christ. Ladies and gentlemen, it burdens my heart to know that there are people that are going to die and go to hell because they don't know Christ and they can't experience Easter the way I can experience Easter. 
I ask you, get right. Come. As, uh, every head bowed and as we stand, I ask that you pray. And if you feel so led to come to the front, please come. Show me your love.